So the last time we were working on the ESP32 step up, that's what the board is called by the way, I don't know if that's the final name, but I thought it was quite funny, a touchdown step up, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, we did the USB connector and the CP2102 USB to serial chip and we did some 3.3 volt stuff to get it working. Um, today I am going to do the rest of the power supply. Well, it's not really a power supply, the power regulation, I should say. And for that, we are going to need a 5 volt regulator, a diode, I'm going to put a fuse in there, terminal for the 12 volt in, and we need the op amp, which in this case is an LM358 as a comparator. And we also need some of the capacitors that are missing and the voltage divider which is a 10k and a 10k and that will halve the input supply for the comparator and that then should be the power section complete so I bought these components from LCSC this is the LM358 a 10 microfarad tantalum capacitor and it's important that this one is 16 volts or at least uh, not 10 volts, the other ones were 10 volts. These of course see a higher voltage so they have to be higher than 12 volts, in this case 16 volt. And these are the diodes. I chose a 20 amp diode and this has a 655 millivolt drop at 10 amps. And the 5 volt regulator which is this LM1117 and then the 5 volt version. I also bought some fuse holders. These are little fuse fuse holders and some fuses to go with them. I chose 10 amp fuses which probably is going to be enough but maybe I have to step one up but for now 10 amp will do fine. And these are the terminals I'm going to use. They're branded Ruiging, Ruiging. I don't know how to pronounce this, um, but these will fit some spade terminals and there is a nice barrier between, well in my case the positive and the ground, so hopefully no arcing. Before I do the fuse and the connector, I am going to do the service mount components and I'm going to do these under the microscope so you can get a better view. But before I start soldering the components, let me try and explain this part of the circuit. First, let's brush up on comparators. An op amp as a comparator has two inputs, one output and a power supply. And in my case, this is 5 volt. The output has two possible states, high or low. I call the non-inverting input of the op amp Vin and the inverting input Vref. A comparator follows two simple rules. The first is, if Vin is higher than Vref, the output is near VCC. So in our case, the 12 volt is going to a 10K, 10K voltage divider, giving about 6 volts on Vin. The reference voltage is coming from the 3.3 volt regulator, and therefore is 3.3 volts. And as 6 volts is higher than 3.3 volts, our output will be near VCC. The second rule is, if Vin is lower than Vref, the output is near ground. So if 12 volt is not plugged in, but the USB is plugged in, Vin is 0 volts and Vref is still 3.3 volts. As 0 volts is lower than 3.3 volt, the output of our comparator will be near our ground voltage. Now in our circuit, a PMP MOSFET will turn on when the voltage on the gate is lower than the source minus the threshold voltage of the MOSFET. It will turn off when the voltage on the gate is higher than the source minus the threshold voltage. So simply put in our circuit, if 12 volt is not present, there is 0 volt at the non-inverting input of the comparator, the output of the comparator is low and the MOSFET is on, letting current flow from drain to source. If 12 volt is present, the output of our comparator will be VCC, which is not low enough to turn on the MOSFET, so the MOSFET is off and thus VBUS is blocked from our circuit. Now, do we have to worry about current flowing back into our USB supply? Well, no. 
if the MOSFET is off, the internal body diode of the MOSFET is blocking current from 5 volts to VBUS. Current can however potentially flow through the internal body diode of the MOSFET, even if the MOSFET is off. But since on the anode of the diode we have 5 volt and on the cathode we also have 5 volt, practically that means no current will be drawn from our USB port. Right, I'm going to start with the diode and I'll just do one of the pins first to make sure it's in place and then after that I can dump a lot of heat into the big pad. Alright, that's on there. Let's do one of the other pins first. And now I'm going to wet my tip first and see if this is going to work. Oops. Yeah, that's a pretty good joint. Let's move over to the 5 volt regulator. And again, I'm just going to tin one of the pins first. And I have to change hands, so I have to solder with my left hand, which is not really a problem. There you go, press it down and do the other pin. A bit more. And now do the tab. Can't feed solder in from this angle. There we go. Let's do redo this pin real quick. There you go. That's fine. And while we're here, I'm gonna do this capacitor. There we go, to the other side, redo this side, there we go, now what's next? Um, yeah, let's do the op amp. Just quickly gonna reorientate the board. To make my life a bit easier. At least when it comes to soldering.
Now let's make sure the orientation is correct. This footprint doesn't have a pin 1 marking. At least it doesn't have a pin 1 dot. It does have a pin 1 marking. And that is the long stripe is where pin 1 is. So it should go this way. There you go. Do the opposite side. And now do the rest of the pins. And well, while we're here, let's do the resistors too. Oops. Well, let's do this left-handed again. Oh, that didn't take. My board is still a little bit wobbly. It's not taped down properly. Go. Ah, I can't reach it. No. I'm just going to turn it around because I can't reach it properly. go just reflow the other side just to be sure
Great. I'm going to use some white tack to hold the connector in place while I solder it. Um, in, in the Netherlands we don't have blue tack. Well, y you can get it, but if you go to the normal like office supply store, you will only have the white tack. So that's fine. It, it works just the same. Let's put it in. And kind of put it in the right place. And hold it. That's okay. Turn it around. Let's see, is that straight? Yeah, straight enough. Now I'm going to remove the white tag because if this gets hot, it gets really sticky and pretty difficult to get off. So I'm just going to take it off now and then do the other side. And I'm expecting to have to put a lot more heat in this side because this is a ground plane. And as you saw earlier, it's pretty big. See, it's sucking all the heat out of my soldering iron. There we go. It's flowing now. It hasn't taken yet. I think that took. Now, the fuse holder. I couldn't find a footprint for it, so I made a footprint myself. So this is going to be an exciting moment. Let's see if I have it correct. That's a tight fit, but I think it's going to fit. Put it in. Come on. Yeah. That fits very well, actually. That is in. And that is in. And it just holds itself. That's great. No white tech needed. That's also in. Now I think this is all it. So I kind of created a problem for myself when I go and solder these LEDs, but I think I'll be fine. So the next step is to put in the fuse and apply some power and hope that nothing flies off the board. Right, the power supply I'm using is a bit overkill. It is uh, 12 volts. 30 amps but it's just for test so I need some 12 volt and the wires are absolutely not the right gauge if I'm going to use it with this ESP32 step up but for now it's just for some voltage and it will do so let's connect this up and now I'm going to turn on the power supply and two things can happen option one nothing really happens so that would probably be a good thing and then we can measure some voltages or we get a big spark or some smoke and that wouldn't be a good thing but there's only one way to try and that is just by turning the power supply on the power supply is on I always use my nose no, no weird smells don't feel anything getting warm so let's measure some voltages move this over and let's start with the actual power supply and see what is coming in ground there and I have about 12.2 volts coming in 
and on the other side of the diode there is oh that's really close to exactly 12 volts and the 5 volts that is also bang on and 3.3 volts also bang on almost and just to see what the comparator is doing the comparator out which is over there should be high and it is see it does want to float towards the 5 volt rail but it doesn't really reach 5 volts but 4.3 volts is enough to turn the MOSFET off and just to verify that everything's actually working I have plugged in the USB and if I on my laptop check for the USB to serial there it is so this circuit is working fine that's a relief because except for maybe not having used the correct pins for the stepper drivers this was my biggest concern that I might have made a mistake the next step is to solder the ESP32 and its capacitors and pull up resistors and also the resistors for the UART and to see if we can actually program this oh and what I actually forgot to uh, do is to turn off the power supply and see when the USB starts supplying its power to the board so I'm gonna do that now this means that VDC will be dropping and when it drops below about 6.6 .6 volts the USB power should take over so here goes and there we go you saw the current going up and if we now measure the output of the comparator that should be low well it's, oh you can't see that let's put it here the output of the comparator is now about a volt and 5 volt is still 5 volt and 3.3 volt is still 3.3 volt and there should be no potential between ground and our external power supply very well